God is worthy of the praise. Saints, turn with me this morning to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel, chapter number one of the book of Daniel. And you will find these recorded words beginning at verse number three. I would like for you to follow along with me. Hallelujah. As God speaks a word to our hearts. And verse three says, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princesses. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning of the, and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Verse 5, saints read that. Verse 7 says, Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Bel to Shazar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and, and to Azariah of Abednego. And verse 8, let's read together. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Let the church say amen. amen. Turn with me for our New Testament scripture to the book of 1 Corinthians. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 3. I'm going to read two verses, verse 16 and 17. That is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. And verse 16 and 17, we would like to read these verses together. Hallelujah. And as you're reading, let God feed you and minister to you. So let us read verse 16 and 17 together. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let the church say amen. Oh, God, he's a good God. He's worthy of the praise. And saints, I would like for you to repeat these words after me. My heart belongs to God. My heart belongs to God. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. In other words, he had a made up mind. But it was his heart that was devoted to God. And God, he is the one that gives us a new heart. Because the heart that we are born with is rebellious, is wicked, is unclean. And I'm not talking about the muscle that pumps blood within your body. But there is a place where God dwells. And God can only dwell in a heart that's clean. 
God, he spoke through his prophet Ezekiel and he promised his people that I'm going to give you a new heart and a new spirit. I'm going to take away the stony heart, the, the stubborn heart. This flesh is stubborn. We have a mind made up to do what we want to do. But when your heart belongs to God, hallelujah, you make up in your mind that I want to please God and do what he wants me to do. Not only did God take away the stony heart, but he said, I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. See, there is a difference, amen, between a heart that is stone and a heart of flesh. And what God is saying, that this heart of flesh is a heart that is receptive. Whereas a stony heart is unable to receive instructions, guidance from God. But the new heart that God gives us when we receive the new spirit it has a hunger and a desire for the spiritual things that come from God. And God says, when my spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, enters in, it has to come on the inside. You have to receive it. It's a gift. And Jesus Christ, he poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for the first time on the day which they call Pentecost. This day means 50th, and it was 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And see, the infilling of the Holy Ghost is a representation of a type of resurrection. Hallelujah, for the saint of God. Now, in order for one to be resurrected, one had to be dead. Well, we were physically alive when Jesus found us, but we were dead in sin. It took the quickening power or the power of the Holy Ghost to raise us up, resurrect us from that old dead life Amen. Into a new walk and new beginning with God. I thank God for my new beginning with Jesus. Everything that comes from God is new. And when the new spirit and the new heart enters into your temple, you won't be able to see it, but you can feel it. Hallelujah. You will feel a newness. Hallelujah, come over you. Amen. But it's not on the outside, it's on the inside. It's a new joy, a joy you've never experienced before. And the Lord is letting us know that when you receive this new joy, this new spirit, this Holy Ghost, you have a responsibility to keep yourself from the unclean thing. You don't want anything to put a damper on your joy. You don't want anything to enter in to hinder your joy. Well, God lets us know that, hallelujah, we may not, amen, have the same guidelines as was given to the children of Israel under the law. For they had dietary guidelines that listed certain animals and certain meats to be clean and certain animals to be listed as unclean. And they were only to partake of the animals listed as being clean. And anything that was unclean, they would consider themselves defiled by why? Because it was contrary to the word of God. Yet, 
the Lord under grace, under grace. God let us know that all of his creation, creatures are clean. Hallelujah. Nothing is to be refused. Hallelujah. But received with thanksgiving, it is sanctified by prayer and the word. Hallelujah. It's not what goes in that defileth the man, but it is what comes out of the clean heart or the unclean heart that defiles a man. So our responsibility is to keep our heart clean by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. For the Lord, he, amen, shows us by his word that, amen, it takes an effort to keep our heart in a place where God is pleased. Because, amen, we live in an unclean world, but yet God is able to keep us clean. Hallelujah. We live in an unholy world, but we, are, we can yet be holy according to the word. But it's going to take a made-up mind. Hallelujah. Because there are many influences around us. Hallelujah. That appeal to this flesh, but they work contrary to the spirit, the new spirit that God has given you. And so this is why God, he, he lets us know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's your responsibility to keep your temple clean. Keep your temple from the unclean thing. Hallelujah. Amen. That represents holiness. That's the standard of God. God, he's a holy God. And the Lord, he began to show us that he demands that we become holy. It is impossible to be holy without the Holy Ghost and without the Holy Word. Oh, I, I praise him, saying, because this new life, amen, is an enjoyable life. Because God, he, amen, provides a, a fellowship among his people people that's, that's, that cannot be compared to anything else. And the more we draw ourselves closer to that which is clean, we separate ourselves from the unclean thing. And as we draw closer to God, we develop a spiritual intimacy with God. Hallelujah. Amen. That will manifest itself with, amen, his presence wherever you go. See, when your heart belongs to God, it does not matter where you are physically, but your desire is to please him and to glorify him, regardless of what your surroundings are. And, and so here we can learn a lesson from God's chosen people for, amen, this, at this time in biblical history, God's people had been brought under captivity because of, of their rebellion and they had forsaken the, the way of God. God, he, he chastened them. And, and we must know that just as a, a parent corrects their children, and more times than not, correction is needed when you see a, a pattern of, of, of behavior um, that is not becoming. And when God sees a pattern in our life that is drifting away from his word, um, he has a way of getting our attention. And God would send prophets and hallelujah to, to warn the people and to let them know that they are falling out of fellowship with him. But the people, they had a stubborn heart. They, they had a rebellious heart and they continued down their own pathway. Well, after a while, 
Hallelujah. When God sees that we are not abiding by his word, well, he's going to send actions. Amen. Just like our parents, I thank God for them. They loved us. They warned us. But when we didn't take heed to the warning, there was no more warning by words. <laughs> Hallelujah. There were actions. Hallelujah. And those actions, they, they got my attention. Hallelujah. And it is to straighten us out and to get us back on the right path. Well, here, God had allowed and raised up, amen, Babylon. And he allowed Babylon to come and, and besiege this, this, this uh, nation. And this nation brought, hallelujah, God's people into captivity. And they were deported uh, to this new land of, of Babylon. And here the king at this time was King Nebuchadnezzar. And so God had used this individual to, to chasten his, his people. But Nebuchadnezzar looked at this as an opportunity. He saw the influx of, of people coming in. And so he said, I'm going to take advantage and, amen, use these individuals to, to build up my kingdom. Hallelujah, to build up my administration. And the point that I'm making here is, see, God, he has an agenda, but the devil has an agenda too. And God has a kingdom, the devil has a kingdom too. God has a church, and the devil has a church too. Hallelujah. The devil's church is religious, but God's church is alive. And we have to know, saints of God, hallelujah, that the enemy, the devil wants to conform or, or to change as many as he can uh, to his likeness, to the likeness of the world. For Satan, he, he's the God of this world. And if he can get you to fall in love with the world, he knows that you will fall out of love with God. And when God, amen, he warns us in his word, don't be conformed to this world, but what? Be transformed by what? The renewing, the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. See, it's the spiritual mind that must be renewed by fellowship and communion with God. Hallelujah. I know every time we come together, my spirit is renewed. Hallelujah. My excitement is renewed in Jesus. And here the Lord, he said that ye may prove, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And, and so here the Lord, he's, He's, he's letting us know that even in the time that Daniel and his friends faced, amen, a test. Hallelujah. We as saints, we face tests. Oh God, amen, to prove our, our loyalty and our commitment to God. Because the devil, he always wants us to, to change us. He, he wants to shape us and that we might be more like the world, but the word wants us to be more like God. And here, amen, as a, hallelujah, the king, he gave a commandment. I want you to, amen, choose out children. Glory to God. See, I want to get them while they're young. Amen. See, young minds, they're, they're impressionable. They are able to learn. Glory to God. And it's good that you feed Amen. A young mind with the right things. Because if you don't feed them with the right things, the world will feed them with the wrong things. Hallelujah. And so as, as parents, we have a, a great responsibility to, to train our children, teach them right, but more importantly, amen, teach them about God. Not only that, amen, not just send them to church, but bring them to church with you. Hallelujah. That they may learn who God is and that they might have an opportunity and a chance to get to know God for themselves. Well, here we can see that, 
Hallelujah. The king had a standard, and he just didn't want any of the children. But he said, I want you to choose out, in verse 4, children with no blemish, well-favored, skillful, cunning in knowledge, understanding in science. In other words, he said, I want the best. I want those that are talented. I want those that are well-favored or, amen, handsome, gorgeous, amen, and I want those that are, are intelligent. And just think about it. If you are talented, handsome, or good-looking, hallelujah, and, and healthy and intelligent, you can be successful in this world. And you can be popular in this world. Hallelujah, for that's the world's standard. They, they choose and they look at things based upon how good it is on the outside. They look at things based upon what they can do for me. But see, God, he looks at the heart. Hey, hallelujah. God, he's not necessarily concerned about the way we look, but yet, he chose us, amen, and he saw what we had need of. Glory to God. We must not be so enamored, amen, with what looks good because what looks good may not always be good for you. Hallelujah. Amen. When you go by sight, you can be disappointed because one may look for a certain thing. Hallelujah. But Amen. Sometimes when you're looking for one thing, you might find something better. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you're looking for those things that are popular with the world, that doesn't necessarily mean that God is with those things that are popular with the world. But the Lord, he has yet a chosen people. Hallelujah. He has a people that, amen, will remain faithful in spite of the influences that are in our world today. Well, here, hallelujah, the king said, not only do I want the best of these children, but here I have a portion of, of meat that I want them to dine from. Glory to God. See here, these individuals whom God had chosen, they were taken and placed in a new home a new environment, yet this environment was not conducive to serving and pleasing God. But yet, if your heart belongs to God, it does not matter what your surroundings are. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I have purposed in my heart, glory to God, amen, I will please God and serve him. Regardless of what may come my way. See, amen, you must not allow temptation because the devil will test you or tempt you to do wrong. But you have to have a made up mind before the test comes. Glory to God. Because if your mind is not made up before the test comes, the, the devil will unmake your mind. And he will influence your mind in the wrong way. But yet, I'm glad to know that my heart, my mind, my body, it belongs to God. And I'm determined not to allow anything to defile and, and hinder my fellowship with the almighty God. Well, here, as we, we go here, we see that the king had a daily, a daily provision. And we must understand and look at this from two aspects. We see the natural, hallelujah, portion Amen. As they say, you are what you eat. You eat healthy food, well, your body is going to respond in, a, in a, a positive way. You drink healthy drinks, your body will respond in a positive way. But yet, there's food that may taste good, but it has a negative effect on the body. And don't you know, that's just how sin is. It may it may taste good or it may be a good experience, but it has a negative effect on our spiritual well-being. And so the actions that we partake in, amen, they may be enjoyed by the flesh, but yet 
They defile the spirit. My God, I hope you get this word, saints. And so this is what it means by the saint of God, hallelujah, not defiling themselves, amen, or being partakers of things that are contrary to the word of God. Hallelujah. It may be popular and accepted with the world, these things, but yet, hallelujah, amen, we have to know my heart, if it belongs to God, I have to look not to please the world, but to please Jesus. Well, here, these men, glory to God, God said that I'm going to test these men for three years, three years, and we must know that Hallelujah. As saints of God, we have to guard what enters in to our temple, whether it be our ear gate, our eye gate. Hallelujah. Amen. These things can hinder, amen, or have a negative effect on our spiritual well-being. The world has a type of music that appeals to the flesh. However, it has a negative impact on our spiritual well-being. For the Lord said, I give you the Holy Ghost that you can make your own melody. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when you get this new joy, you will realize that you can make and sing spiritual songs. Make a melody in your heart. This is why God had led us to your heart has to belong to God. When your heart is happy, amen, your body is happy. I'm talking about your spiritual well-being. Hallelujah. Your body may be sick, but yet my spiritual joy is full in God. Well, here these men, God, they were chose four that were separated and, and, and chosen out of, of the multitude. Daniel, amen, Hananiah, Meshach, and Isaiah. See, we are not familiar with those names. But Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, <laughs> they were given new names. Glory to God. They were brought into a new place. They were asked to learn new knowledge. But yet only God can give you a new heart. Hallelujah. And see, that's the heart. That, amen, it has to belong to God. We cannot serve God with a divided heart. A heart can't be wavering uh, based upon our situation or our circumstance. But yet here... Daniel, he purposed in his heart, and he made up in his mind that we are not going to defile ourselves. Now, the king did not know about this. Hallelujah. But see, God, he knows everything. And, and, and everywhere you go, when God bless you to be holy, you have to be holy everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Holy in a supermarket. Holy in the school, holy on the job, holy when you go out of town. Some folk go out of town, uh, as they say, let their hair down. I don't know what that means, because I don't have any hair to let down. But I understand that folk go out to have a good time. But yet, hallelujah, when your heart belongs to God, amen, you can go away clean and come back clean. Go away holy, come back holy. You don't want to go away one way and come back defiled. Hallelujah. But when your heart belongs to God, you're committed. There's a commitment to God daily. It's not one time a week. It's not every once in a while. But every day, Lord, give me your provision. Eh, give me your bread. It's greater than the king's meat. Hallelujah, I don't care. The devil, he will feed you every day. He will, this world will give you and entertain you that this flesh is satisfied and going to want more and more and more. But the closer you walk with Jesus, he'll give you an appetite for spiritual things. And when your appetite for spiritual things increase, your appetite for the fleshly things decrease. And so here, Daniel, hallelujah, God brought favor. I want you to see that God will work it out for you when you have 
a made-up mind. And when your heart is purposed toward God, I'm not talking about accomplishing what you want, but I'm talking about that God might receive the glory. Amen. Daniel was not trying to make a name for himself. He was not trying to be a troublemaker, but hallelujah, he was, amen, had a purpose that I don't want to partake in something that's going to defile my God. Now, amen, no one else sees me. I'm not in my own country like I used to be. And so the devil will say, well, it, it's all right. Hallelujah, because you're in their country. Hallelujah, you got to walk according to their custom. You, you go along to what? Get along. Mm -mm. But when it comes to your soul, hallelujah, you let nobody or no one cause you to compromise your relationship with God. Hallelujah, I don't care who it is. Amen, Jesus Hallelujah. He said, if you love your mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. Husband, wife, children. Yes, these relationships we have. He's not saying you can't love them, but don't compromise my word for them. Hallelujah. Don't defile yourself for their benefit to maintain their good graces. Oh, God has a word for us today. Hallelujah. I thank God. Oh, when your heart is purposed toward God. Amen. Amen. Your mind is made up, but the devil will do all he can to try to unmake your mind. And he will give you every reason and every excuse to go in the other direction. But yet, when your heart is purposed toward God, you won't even listen to those excuses. You won't even entertain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How to please people. But Lord, I just want to please you. I just want to stay in your good graces. Because he knew that though he was in Babylon, he served a God that's everywhere. And he sees all things. And there's nothing that gets by God. I don't care what city you go to, what country. Hallelujah. You can't escape sin. <laughs> and you can't escape the eyes of God. Hallelujah. But see, amen, when you look to please God and not please people, you don't care who sees you. Glory to God. As long as I'm doing that which is right by God, hallelujah, that's all that matters. Well, amen, Daniel, God gave Daniel a plan. And here it was not out to, to amen, be rebellious, but yet, he knew that God was in the plan. And he said, well, let the others eat the king's meat. In verse 12, said, prove, prove or, or test, hallelujah, thy servants, Lord to God. He pleaded with him out of respect. He said, 10 days, let them give us pulse to eat vegetables and water to drink. Hallelujah. See, the Lord, he, he lets us know, I don't need all the fancy things that the world offers. Jesus, just give me your bread and give me your drink. <laughs> See, there's a spiritual drink. Mm. See, some folk can't go out to the club unless they get their drink first. Hallelujah. See, when I was out in the world, <laughs> before God found me, amen, I used to want the other drink. But until I got the right drink, until I received the holy drink. Hallelujah. When God give you that good drink, you'll never thirst, oh Lord, for the natural things, the things that can influence you in the wrong way. But yet the Holy Ghost will influence you in the right way. Oh, he's a good God, saints. Hallelujah. He said 10 days. Glory to God. Amen. And that's all that we need. His confidence was in God's plan. I want you to, amen, know that you have to have confidence in God's word. You don't know how he's going to do it. You don't know when he's going to do it. But all you know that God is able, hallelujah, to do it. Amen. And you know that God will make a change. 
God is going to do something that's different than what the king's meat, hallelujah, can do. And you don't know how good the pulse and water from God is until you taste it for yourself. Amen. There was a time where all we ate was from the king's table, the world's table. That's all that we knew, but I'm glad that Jesus found me and let me know there was something better. There's a better table that you can dine from. There's a better food that can feed your soul. There's a better drink that come from God. And we didn't know, we didn't know whew, how good it was. Hallelujah. But when we became partakers of this Holy Ghost, we can say what the psalmist said, oh, taste and see. <laughs> that the Lord, how many know he's good? Hallelujah. He's good in the morning. He's good on day one. He's good on day two. He's good on day seven. He's good on day ten. Every day. Every day. Woo. Don't stop with the ten days. Keep on eating. Hallelujah. Keep on dining. Keep on drinking. Oh, from the table of God. And here these men, they appeared fair and fatter in which they had produced results. Hallelujah. By God's diet. By God's amen provisions. Amen. That was far better than what the world can offer. Hallelujah, yes, the things of the world, and it will offer you a lot of things, amen, it will make this flesh feel good, but yet, saints, there's nothing in this world that can make your soul feel good, hallelujah, but Jesus, he'll give you a soul blessing, he'll touch you on the inside, amen, where you don't want nothing else but this good word that come from God, and I can't wait for another meal. Amen. Just as I had finished dining from one meal from God, I can't wait for the next meal. Because when something is good to your soul, you just want it again. You want more and more of it. He's worthy to be praised, but yet God was not finished with these men because the Bible says God gave them wisdom, gave them knowledge, and he allowed them to be ten times better than those that dined from the king's table. God's a good God. That which you receive, don't receive it from the wrong table. Don't depend on this world to be your joy, to be your strength. But my dependency is on Jesus. If I gotta wait and dine by myself, I'm gonna eat pulse and water, knowing God has an end result for me that's far better than what I am right now. Only Jesus, amen, can bless you in a way that you're better than before you walk through those doors. He's a good God, but all he wants you to do is give me praise, give me thanks for what I've already done. See, God wasn't done with these men. He was just preparing them for yet a test to come. But when God gives you the victory over the devil and his temptations, you rejoice, you praise God, but you watch because another test is on the way. And here Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 3, he said, I got an image made with gold. Hallelujah. And I want everyone 
in the kingdom when they hear the music they fall down and worship this golden image now with your heart is not with God you say to yourself this look like a good time let's go to the concert let's go to the place where we can be entertained but when your heart belong to God you already made up in your mind I'm not going I'm not listening and I'm not going to bow down to that image made with gold the devil has a whole lot of things in this world trying to tempt you to bow down to it because that which worship and bow down to is that which you serve but yet I serve I said I serve the true and the living God he sits high yet he looks low and he sees the struggles that I'm going through and when you take a stand for God he'll stand up with you and let you know that you're not alone. That you don't have to go that with the crowd that to feel good. That but all I need, that I said all I need that is two or three. That amen. That love me. That whose heart belongs to me. That and I. That I'm gonna be in the midst. That he's worthy. That to be praised. That well. That God had three. That so Drack, Nizak, and Abednego. Amen. They failed. Hallelujah to bow down to this image made by Nebuchadnezzar. And yet the king found out. Hallelujah. See, the devil don't like it when you tell him no. Hallelujah. He don't like it when you don't serve him. He don't like it when you don't go with the crowd. Because Jesus said, there's a crowd on the Broadway. But if you want just a few, amen, there's a straight gate and a narrow way. Hallelujah. Only few are going to be there. Hallelujah. But in that way is life, spiritual life. It's joy, that unspeakable, that and full of glory. That, well, that, these three, that, they didn't go that, with the crowd. That, why? That, because they purposed that, in their heart. That, they had a made up mind. That, and let the king know, that, oh king, that, live forever. That, we are careful that, how to answer you. That, but our God, my, 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 our God. See, when God give you a new heart, you want to get with folk that serve the same God that you do. You want to get with folk that love the same God that you do. You want to get with folk that got the same joy and enjoy Jesus just like you because you speak the same things. I can speak for you. You can speak for me. Our God, whom we serve, he's able. I don't know when. I don't know how. But how many know he's able. I don't know when he's going to heal my body. I don't know when he's going to save my family. But I know he's able. But I'm not going to bow down to you devil. I'm not going to serve you. Because I serve the true and living God. Give God praise. Well, 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 my, 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 amen, the devil got mad, hallelujah, I tell you, the devil, he'll come against you like a flood, they try to get you to bow down, 
but yet all he's doing is bringing me down to my knees and when I'm at that place that's close to the feet of Jesus I'm right where God wants me to be Lord I need you I need you the devil has come against me but yet I'm going to hold on I'm going to stand firm I'm committed to go all the way with my Jesus well they threw these three men in the furnace and the devil said if you don't want to serve me well I'm going to throw you in the furnace but that's alright because that's right where God wants me to be that's right where God is when the king he looked he threw in three he looked again tell that devil look again look again look again you thought I was down you thought I was bound but yet that's four because Jesus is with me hallelujah he wasn't with the crowd he wasn't with the concert he was with the three that took a stand for the truth God is not always with the crowd most of the time he's not with the crowd there were 5,000 that Jesus fed 4,000 another time and he knew that they only followed him for the bread they didn't want salvation and today many have a hunger for religion they want to be changed on the outside but God will change you on the inside Hallelujah. You need a new heart. You need a new spirit. Woo! And when your joy comes from the inside out, the world can't provide that. The world can't give you that. Because I have experienced, many of you, joys of the world, but there's no joy like Jesus. There's no joy like the Holy Ghost joy. And God has a way of man magnifying himself in the midst of trouble. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you need him the most, he's right there. Hallelujah. The king was astonished. Hallelujah. He said, take these men, pull them out. Hallelujah. They didn't smell like fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when, I don't know about you, you, you barbecue, right? And you standing, you're not even in the fire. You're just over and around the smoke. It's all in your clothes. <laughs> you got to take the clothes off and shower and change. If you don't, it's all in your hair. That it's a it's a smoke that you can smell. Unfortunately, hallelujah, you know that God He's able to clean you up from the wrong smoke because it is attached with you. It, it, hallelujah, you can't hide. Oh, Lord, when you smoking the wrong thing, because <laughs> it'll stay with you. But yet, God has a way. Hallelujah. It's, more, it's better than going cold turkey. <laughs> you take the taste right out of your mouth. See, when the new spirit comes in, he put that old desire out. And you thank God, saints. Hallelujah for this new, the new joy. The new drink is far better. It's far better. Hallelujah. The king brought him out. And he said, Hallelujah, I'm going to promote these men. The God in whom they serve <laughs> is a true God. He got the enemy. Hallelujah. Testifying. Amen. How good God is. Oh, Lord. That's, when, you, when God do something for you, hallelujah, no one else do it but God. You can tell and speak your testimony like it just happened yesterday. Yes. Amen and hallelujah. People are amazed. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to serve him. But yet, they got to get him to know him for themselves. The greatest miracle. See, God can perform miracles of healing for the body. And people are enamored. God can do miraculous things for 
financially. See, but the greatest miracle, hallelujah, is receiving the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Deliverance of your soul. That's the, fire, that's the best miracle. That's the miracle God is still performing today. But it takes a willing heart, a willing mind to surrender their will. Hallelujah. That's what I had to do. I had to give up my old ways. Give up my will and say, Lord, I surrender to you. Somebody told me to call on the name of Jesus. Why Jesus? Because that's the name of God. Neither is there salvation in any other name. Hallelujah. That, something about that name. <laughs> See, you didn't realize how sweet that name until you, amen, he put the right spirit in you. Then you can connect with the name. And I can't go throughout the day without calling on the name. Because that name gives me strength. Holy, that name gives me encouragement. Because I can stir up, oh Lord, that joy on the inside by calling on the name of Jesus. And I praise God for, you. hope you get this message saying, hallelujah, God wants you to purpose in your heart to serve him daily. See, the devil daily is trying to unmake your mind. But you have to start out the day. Hallelujah. My mind is made up not to defile myself. Because if you don't acknowledge, hallelujah, and commit yourself right in the beginning of the day, the devil going to uncommit you. I told you if your mind is not purposed or made up, the devil going to unmake your mind. Hallelujah. Discourage you to go in a direction that is contrary to the way of God. And so we have to know, saints, when you get to that point where you enjoy God daily, he's just not a Sunday God, just not an Easter God, just not a Christmas God, but every day God's available. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And he is able to feed us every day. Give us this day our daily bread. Woo, I praise him that he feeds us daily. In the noonday prayer, Give us a mind to pray, not only, more importantly, for others. And God, he blesses us. But yet, you thank God for a mind to pray. See, when your heart's in the right place, your mind will be in the right place. Hallelujah. On spiritual things. Glory to God. Don't, amen, or let others influence you from what God has purposed in your heart. See, people will talk you out of doing things for God. But they'll talk you into doing things for the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, the enemy has his that will help you to do wrong. Right? Why? Because, amen, there is an abundance. Amen. Hallelujah. As we were, glory to God, at one time did not know God. But now that God has a few, amen, you can be an encouragement. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us, let us, let us go. Hallelujah to the house of the Lord. Let us just come and enjoy the Lord. Enjoy your time with Jesus. Serving God is not a burden, it's a joy. You got to get to that point though. <laughs> I wasn't always at that point where I am now. But I enjoy every time I'm able to come together. I'm learning how to rejoice in my problems, in my troubles, because everything don't always go the way I like it to go or how I want it to go. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want to, amen, put on the, the front or, or the display that everything is always all right. <laughs> because it certainly is not. But yet, everything is all right in Jesus. I want you to know that. See, God said rejoice in the Lord. Don't say rejoice in your problems. Because there's nothing good that we can find in our problem. But yet, there's good that we can find in Jesus. So we have to take our eyes and sometimes off our problems. Amen. Put them on the Lord. He's able to equip you and strengthen you. That you can face your problem, not with fear, but with faith. Oh, God, with courage. God said, be strong and of a good courage. And I'm going to be with you. I won't forsake you. I won't fail you. That's having confidence in God. Knowing that he will show up when I need him the most. And how many know he's an on-time God? I said, he's an on-time guy. He's worthy to be praised. Eternal Lord and Savior.